On today's Techno Babble, troubleshooting your computer. This is Tech No Babble, your weekly source for church video and graphics news, perspectives, tips, and tricks. And now here's your host, Paul Clifford. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of Techno Babble. This is the show where every week I talk about uh, video and graphic design in the church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host, and I'd love for you to ask your question, so just do that below the video. Now, if you're listening to the audio, there's no video to leave a comment underneath, so just head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash T-N-B, short for tech no babble and there you can uh, find one of the recent comments uh, one of the recent shows and leave your comments below so we're wrapping up a series on troubleshooting and it occurred to me this afternoon as I was thinking about it that I really haven't talked about computers and computers are special now a lot of other things either work or they don't work. You know, if you've got an XLR cable, it's either working or it's not working. You don't reboot the XLR cable. You don't install an update on the XLR cable. It either works or it doesn't. Now, you can fix it if it's broken a lot of times, but it's not as complex as a computer. And in fact, as I'm recording this, uh, Apple released the latest version of their operating system, uh, OS 10.11 El Capitan, and uh, that contributed to what I was thinking as well. So let's talk about this real quick. Let's say you've got a problem with your computer. It's kind of a joke, but there's a reason that this is the way that it is, um, you always want to start by rebooting your computer. Now, this has happened to me several times where I've had what I thought was a hardware failure. You know, a camera wouldn't work, a USB webcam, um, maybe the audio wasn't working right, or the trackpad wouldn't work, or everything was just locked up. And so I just rebooted. Now, uh, this is going to be the same whether you're on Linux, a PC, or a Mac, Windows, rather, or a Mac, or even if you're on a Chromebook, that it's certainly the case that sometimes the software gets a little buggy until you reboot it. And you start everything fresh from scratch, and oh, look! All of a sudden, the hardware failure I had isn't a failure anymore. It's just a problem that it needed to be rebooted. This happened to me very recently where I had a uh, SD card that just refused to be read by the computer. And I've had this happen before, and sometimes, you know, the copper gets a little oxidized, and you can scratch it with your fingernail, and then it works none of my tricks worked. So it just occurred to me right before I gave up on the card, by the way, that's the card that I'm recording this on, uh, right before I gave up on the card, I decided that I'd reboot the computer. Guess what? Started working. So that's one thing that you need to consider. Also consider, have you installed any new software? Because sometimes software one piece of software that you don't think has anything to do with it will interact in odd ways with another piece of software. So sometimes it's uh, a new driver that's installed by the new software that maybe you weren't even thinking about. Uh, if you're on Windows, maybe it's a DLL file that got corrupted or updated or something like that. Sometimes there are little bitty uh, pieces of software that are updated by a larger piece of software and maybe a third piece of software, the one that you were using before, is dependent on that. So consider 
what software has uh, been updated recently. This happened to me again uh, with ProPresenter, ProPresenter 5, probably about a year ago. I went through everything I could think of, checked on the forums, and then it occurred to me, wait, it worked last Tuesday. It didn't work this Tuesday. In between then, what did I install? Ah, it turns out I installed some software that I didn't think had anything to do with anything. But as soon as I uninstalled it, all of a sudden ProPresenter starts working again. Yeah, that's the way that it is sometimes. Next, consider could you have a virus or some malware or some sort of something that is running in the background, hidden, that's causing problems. This happened, well, Windows is famous for this, but it also happens uh, with other software as well. So it is possible to get a virus on a Mac. It's harder, but it is possible. It is possible to get malware on a Mac or even on Linux. Harder, but still possible. So I want you to consider, is that a possibility? So run some diagnostics on it like that. Now, you could be having, instead of software problems, you could be having hardware problems. So all the normal troubleshooting rules apply. You know, if you've got a webcam with a USB extension cable on it, it might be the webcam, but it might be the USB extension cable. It might be the USB port. So test all the hardware in the simplest configuration, short leash it, do everything that you can that we've talked about in the past about troubleshooting hardware. Also look, and this is something that I've seen more than once, look for a problem with power. Now, despite the fact that the vast majority of homes are alternating current AC, computers actually run on DC. So to get that, they have power supplies that turn the AC into DC. And sometimes those power supplies can get a little weak. If that's the case, that instead of putting out the, let's say it's a 400 watt power supply, I'm just throwing that out. So let's say instead of on a desktop computer, let's say instead of uh, using uh, throwing out 400 watts, it's throwing out like 200. Computer might start up. Everything might seem okay until you use your optical drive and then you have problems. So it is possible that you could run into a situation where it's actually the power supply starting to go south. Let's also talk about hard drives. Um, more and more nowadays we're seeing solid state drives. And solid state drives, they are less susceptible to the same type of failures as spinning drives. Uh, spinning drives, uh, when I worked in tech support back in the day, we used to say it's not if your hard drive is going to fail, it's when you, your hard drive is going to fail. So spinning drives, quite often you'll get three years out of them without any difficulty, but just consider if you've had a spinning drive for four years, five years, maybe it's an archive drive you don't access very often, uh, it might be worth looking at. Um, and it might be worth making sure you've got another copy of that data. Now for solid state drives, they tend to work to a point. Now, there will come a time in the future where we're going to start seeing solid state drives fail. That's because they only have a finite amount of writes on them. So you can read a whole lot off your solid state drive, but you can only rewrite to it so many times. So it's possible that in the future you're going to see a problem with the solid state drive where it just starts going south. So keep that in mind. Now, how do you check a drive to see if it's starting to go? Well, first off, if you're starting to have problems with the drive, consider that maybe it's starting to go. If 
if you start to suspect that maybe it is starting to go, the first thing I would do is I would run a utility on it. On the Mac, it's disk utility, but there are plenty on Windows, plenty on Linux that can analyze the drive and say, tell you if there are problems with it. And if you start to see problems, start to consider replacing the drive. But there are also other things that can go wrong. Um, with spinning drives, they have such tight tolerances that some relatively minor problems can cause problems with spinning drives. So consider those. So I hope that that gives you just a taste of some of the complications that you can have with computers. If you like this content, you'd probably like my email newsletter, so head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S, and there you can pick up a church tech gift of your choice along with a free subscription to, your, to my email newsletter. And you'd probably uh, like to check out what I have at my store, including my brand new community, Church Tech U, that's located at Church Tech u.com uh, c-h-u-r-c-h-t-e-c-h -E the letter u.com and that is a community of people that are all learning about church tech i'm just now getting started and i'd love for you to join me till next time this is paul allen clifford with trinity digital media.com go out and change eternity mm -hmm.